Welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through their industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Laurie Swenson. She is a transformational career coach and 20 plus year recruiter in the tech industry. She inspires women in tech to embrace a practical and spiritual path to reimagine re their career future. Welcome to the show, Laurie. Thank you. Thank you for having me, AJ. Really excited to be here. You are welcome to the show, Laurie. You are welcome to India in this online form. And I'm sure not just in India, but a lot of people across the globe, especially women, will benefit from what you are. we are talking about today. So we'll be talking about career reset for uh, women in tech. So I want to understand uh, from you, Laurie, what is the problem? What are the challenges for, you know, women in tech especially? Is the industry creating challenges or is it about the left brain activities or the right brain activities? I I can't believe you went there. You just went there. Yeah, I really believe, um, yeah, we can look at the, the industry um, and we've all heard it, you know, especially for women, how it's, uh, it's a difficult path, but it's also a lucrative path. And so there's this you know, I want to be part of, a, you know, I want to build my career in, in a way in which I can support myself and my family and also um, enjoy what I'm doing, give back, have an impact. And then there's all kinds of roadblocks that come up. But I really do believe that, um, you know, we are responsible for what we create in the world. And we, no matter what obstacles are in our way, no matter what setbacks we have, we can always return to ourselves. And when you talk about left and right brain, I do think, especially when we're technologists, and I was a technologist at the beginning of my career, we lean into sort of the left brain rational mind uh, processes. You know, let's make lists, let's figure things out, let's uh, compare things, let's analyze things. And it's very um, effective. But what we've done is we've sort of made it the, the first thing we do, completely forgetting about this whole other um, side of ourselves. We can call the right brain, but it's even more than that. It's this, this access to... Um, the, you know, our intuition that can, you know, and I believe that should be how we, and I even using the word should makes me cringe a little bit, but I believe that if we start first with our right brain guidance, uh, our creativity guidance, our spiritual, uh, spiritual guidance, and then let the, the, uh, the rational mind uh, have input uh, to help us further things along. I think that's just an easier path uh, no matter where we go with our career. Right, right, Lord. You are a career uh, coach. You know about things. On top, you are a recruiter in the tech industry. So where does this problem begin? You, you have seen all these things from very close. Help us understand why this, you know, 75% male-dominated workplace in tech. Why it happens? Who makes it happen? Is it deliberate or is it that the applicants are more male? Help us in that because you have seen it from that very close to space, space yeah. called being a recruiter. Yeah. So, gosh, I don't know if I have all the answers, but I can say what I have seen, especially in America where I'm from, is that we've built a culture from, you know, over really probably, you know, even pre predating America that there's been this culture where there is, um, uh, you know, an emphasis on um, roles and the male role and the and the, the the female role and what's expected, what's possible, what you can dream about for yourself. And women, of course, have been limited in what's possible for for. Um, you know, most of time, it seems like. And so now we fast forward into, into uh, you know, present day, and we have corporate America that's built around these same sorts of ideas, 
you know, even in the grade school levels, and that has been changing, but, you know, girls are not as good in math or girls are not as good in science, you know, and so you start to believe these things that are being fed to us through the culture and, and how we're socialized through media and um, it, it just, we, we don't know to challenge that. And I do think that we're making progress. I think shows like this where we're, we're talking about it helps. And I think even in, um, you know, uh, leadership, we've seen an increase in women in leadership. That helps even in, and I'm talking about not just leader leading companies, but leading um, countries, you know. And so then you start to, it starts to seep in that there's different ways to approach things. We don't have to be, you know, um, uh, sort of that command and control, uh, but that we can be more collaborative, inclusive, and that is definitely feminine qualities. And I don't necessarily put those on, uh, you know, that your feminine qualities can only come from uh, women identified. Yeah, you know, yeah. Absolutely. So I don't think that fully answers, but I just think it's it's been it's just been part of how we've been uh, born and raised, and um, and now it's starting to be challenged. Now we're starting to see the benefits of, uh, you know, having an opportunity for everyone to pursue their life's purpose. And I do believe that our work is our form of service in the world. And if we are aligned with um, that, you know, again, that whole brain living, that uh, inner guidance, and then we get the support from the outside. So first it starts on the inside and then getting the support from the outside, um, culture and uh, systems, you know, save the world. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. See, it's it's a world which is talking all about being whole. Whole brain living, eat whole grains. Yes. And you know, all, 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 all of these things. And there was one more thing I forgot. Holistic living. So you see? Yes. Yeah. So so that, yes. that's a great thing that is amidst all these uh, you can say negative things that people talk about. It is such a wonderful. You when you talk about that, you know, even things are looking better in the tech industry for women. So how how do you see that going forward? Will will these numbers be better? <laughs> and then when you talk about you know in these better times going forward, what do you mean by career reset for women in tech? Should you talk about? dream career so yeah. you know how, how how does that work within the tech space or outside it help us understand right. it. yes so to, to, to speak to your first question you know i mean when i graduated with my degree in technology and became a software engineer uh that was in the united states that was the peak of the time when most women were getting degrees in technology it has definitely dropped but now we're seeing a bit of an upswing and i think part of that is um you know just based on uh the efforts the the social um uh you know uh climate and and pushback and and having our voices be heard, that we're we're getting more um, uh, more access, and and then uh, and more funding. You know, when you talk about women uh, founding tech companies, and it's still abysmal. Trust me, it's abysmal. But every right. every drop, it to me is positive. Um, and so now, when we talk about uh, a career reset or pursuing, you know, I just really th think about. Um, being aligned. I really, really do believe that when we're out of a line, it's like a car where the wheels are not quite aligned and you're constantly like pulling back on the wheel to get yourself going straight. If you were to let the wheel by itself, it would take you so far off course that you're like, I don't even know how I got here. And I think that's what happens in people's careers is because we're looking outward. We're looking at the the processes, the rules, the the procedures that have been in place for so long, and we're trying to sort of bend ourselves and fold ourselves into that particular um, 
system that we become out of alignment. And so stepping back, sort of resetting um, yourself can, will make you more effective as a leader, more effective as a communicator, more effective um, as a collaborator, as a mentor, um, more effective in uh, putting forth your ideas that can then change how work gets done in the world. Um, so being aligned and alignment is an inside job. That's what I keep going back to. It's really like, you know, um, it's, it, it's what brings you joy. It's, you know, what work makes you feel peaceful and productive and useful. Um, and not, you know, not saying it's not going to be hard work at times. Heck yeah. And that's also super awesome, you know, to feel like at the end of the day, it's like a, you know, just even a physical workout, you know, when you're done with it and you're like, oh my gosh, I am, you know, I'm it. Right. And that's how you want to feel at the end of the day of work. You don't want to feel, and I, I coach a lot of women in tech who are feeling this, that, you know, um, my voice isn't heard. I don't feel like I'm having impact. I, um, you know, I, I, I'm being pulled in a thousand different directions, you know, death by meeting. Uh, I'm not feeling, you know, understood as far as what my personal needs are with regards to supporting my own health or supporting my, my outside life. The work-life balance is completely out of whack, you know, so I hear these things. So I know it's still happening. And it's, I just decided because I've been there that it wasn't worth fighting upstream to try to change from the outside, but I'm going to change from the inside. And that's what I coach my women to do. And it, and it's you, it's amazing, really. I mean, it's, it's kind of simple when you start to listen to your inner voice and be like, oh yeah, okay. I'm going to mention this in the meeting. I'm going to start to speak up when I, my intuition is saying, Hey, I'm not quite sure that this is going to get us where we want to grow or go. Or in fact, you know, have we considered these other things? Because sometimes when we're in this sort of linear thinking, we, it's hard to see outside of that. And a woman's voice and in trusting ourselves and, um, you know, no matter the consequences is, is worth doing. Right, right. In a nutshell, if you can say, people who are people who are looking to go outside the tech industry or being inside, in a nutshell, if you can put it in a few points, okay, these are the points you remember, and these are the points, you know, people who are looking for some transition outside the tech industry or maybe related to tech industry, but outside the jobs that they are currently doing. What are the few things that they can Remember to become a strong force within the industry and even outside it. Yeah. So I think that um, first and foremost, be we don't spend enough time reflecting on ourselves. So first and foremost, get very clear on what your gifts, skills, and abilities are. Acknowledge them, honor them, celebrate them, and bring them into your work whatever you choose to do. And I do see a lot of people coming into tech and out of tech. Secondly, start to hone um, some of what I call these, these self-empowerment tools, your intuition, your energy, like being aware of your energy and when it's productive for you in meetings, in situations, in interviews, whatever, and when it's unproductive. And then finally, of course, uh, your thoughts. You know, we have... Um, Thoughts become things and, and we have the ability to, to challenge our thoughts. So, and then ultimately creating, putting a vision in front of yourself and then making those small steps forward uh, every day towards creating a, a career that leaves you feeling peaceful, enjoyful, connected, and uh, of service. Wonderful. And of Wonderful. course, well paid, <laughs> you know, well paid. recently paid, Absolutely. recently paid. Oh. Right. So what, what would be the dream job if you say for a woman, whether it is uh, within tech, outside tech, any other tech, you know, help us understand so that you know, people have this mind. People thought, you know, the great resignation will answer that. The digital nomad life will answer that. You know, work from home will answer that. Work from half, work half from office, half work from home. What is the dream job like? For, for men and women, I guess it is the same thing, but I want to hear from you because 
in your career as a recruiter, as a coach, you must be hearing a lot about these things. You know, it's almost like a utopian idea, but I, I'm sure this particular part is achievable. Yeah. So um, the dream job is the is the job that leaves you feeling joyful and uh, sufficiently paid and uh, not um, uh, drained and confused and and scared. You know, that's the dream job. Every person has a unique uh, skills, gifts, abilities, ways of, of looking at things. And so every um, the perfect job for you is not necessarily the perfect job for me. Uh, but but the common thread underneath it all is how are we feeling when we're doing the work? And do we feel connected? Do we feel um, seen, heard, like like we're with our people, you know, that there's some belonging there, that there's a, a, a bigger purpose, a bigger impact that we're having. Ultimately, I think people want to have an impact. They want to make a difference. And they want to, um, you know, they just want to have, have fun. You know, I have three, um, my mission statement is just is three things. And I think this speaks directly to, to what you're asking is one, it's to uh, trust life unconditionally. Two is to have fun. And three is to uh, spread love in all its forms. And so for me, when you bring that into your career and love, of course, that's such a, you know, oh, that word. But, you know, our work is such a, a, a place where we can express what our love, you know, um, and that's in kind. Love is kindness. Love is patience. Love is generosity. Love is compassion. You know, love is uh, connection. Love is is um, is fun. You know, I mean, it's just all of those things. And so I think the ideal career for anyone is one where they're connected to themselves and they're connected to their higher purpose, not in, in, in a really, uh, I'm a, I'm a Capricorn, you know, and you, I'm super practical. I always say that w as a coach, I'm at that intersection of, um, you know, intuition and common sense. Uh, cause I, I'm, I am super practical. I mean, when we talk about switching jobs, whether into tech or out, I'm going to say, look, we've got to do some practical stuff. What does your resume and LinkedIn profile look like? But also, you know, what lights you up? What, you know, what brings you peace and joy? Yeah. So I don't know. It's hard for me to simply answer for one, each person, but if you can connect to your inner self and then express that out in the world, um, spreading love in all its forms, then I think you're onto something. Absolutely. Absolutely. The whole idea is that anything that makes you be you, let yeah. it be yourself. I love it. Absolutely. Thank you. So uh, there is so much to learn about, you know, these things from you, Laurie, and I'm sure a lot of people would like to learn from you, be coached by you, and <laughs> also, you know, get that career reset you know, with your advice. So what is the best way for them to connect with you? Yeah, so on the screen is my website. You can go there, inspihertech.com. I'm also out on LinkedIn. Uh, so love to connect with people on LinkedIn. We do have a career reset. So career reset is actually a group program. It's a two month program. It starts, the next one kicks off January of 2024. So you can sign up and join now. Or you can work on with me one-on-one -on -one in six-month coaching packages because people, you know, some want groups, some want, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, and I offer both. And so go to the website. You'll see all the offerings there. And I love to hear from your community and really enjoyed, um, you know, being able to tell my, who doesn't want to talk about their ideas and thoughts. So that was fun. Absolutely. With this, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Thank you for having me.